every week I try to find something interesting that we would do as a webinar. And since we are going, I try to match it to whatever is going on right now. So last week, as you all know, we did unconscious bias and we have a Facebook group called Reinvent Yourself with Sahara, I believe. I mean, I can invite you and we have whatever we do here, we have it there. So today, oh, I like that. yeah, I'm, whoever wants the invite, please let me know and I'll send you. And, and because most of the people here are in the group. So um, it's very private. It's a, it's a safe environment for all of us. And it just like, it, we support each other, you know, and, and we basically uh, make sure that we adjust each other crown, like I want to call it always, right? And I met great people there. So it just, okay. So today, like I said, I thought we thought about something, what to do, what to do. And then we thought about doing emotional intelligence. And when we are going to go through it, you will know why I choose emotional intelligence, specifically what we're going through now. I mean, we, we were, we have been like thrown like to the wall, like beginning of March because of COVID. And it was like, we, most of us, kind of lost our balance and barely when we were trying to get back, we see what happened with George Floyd and how it affected us, not only socially, but emotionally and individually to each one of us. I believe, I think it took me probably a week to get that aching feeling in my heart and in my chest out. You know, I just like, it, it just like it left like a void in my chest. So I tried to pivot that to something that we can all, grow and learn from. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about emotional intelligence. So without further ado, I'm going to start sharing my screen. The first thing I would like to start with is, and you're going to know once we finish that, why this is very important. You know, Maya Angelou is one of my heroes. And she said, I have learned that people will forget what you said. And people will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So emotional intelligence obviously is about emotions and about feelings and about how it can make us smarter. So it's important to know that people will always remember how you made them feel. You made them feel great. You made them feel accepted. You made them feel uh, belonging. You made them feel loved. Or did you make them feel like they didn't count? Like they're not worthy. Like they're not accepted like they excluded, like they are uh, basically uh, not included in whatever you do. And, and I'm going to, so what we're going through, the crisis that we are going through right now is not actually creating leaders, but it's actually revealing who they are. And, and I want to let you know that people have this idea that leadership means that you are an executive or you are a manager or you are a director or you have like a high position in an organization or, or in a high position in a community, but leadership has nothing to do with that. Leadership is not, leadership is not a title. Leadership is not what's on your business card. Leadership is a choice and leadership is a journey that never stops. It's a journey from where you are to where you want to be and how you want to show up. There are people that could be on an assembly line and they can lead people more than a CEO of a company. So leadership actually, like I said, is, is a choice and it's a journey that never stops. We cannot show up one day as a leader and then the second day say, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to do it. So what we're going through right now from a pandemic to the unrest to wanting to have social injustice is actually showing people that are leaders, you know, rather than creating them right now. And we have seen a lot of young people are taking the reins and they have a voice and they want everybody to listen to them and they're actually taking action and executing their ideas. No leadership skill is currently needed or more in demand in this crisis, both the pandemic and the social unrest that we have or the look for social injustice more than emotional intelligence. And we're going to know why. So why emotional intelligence and why now? The COVID-19 or pandemic that we have ha is basically the, the biggest or greatest test of emotional intelligence. And it's the biggest and greatest test for all of us 
since probably a hundred years ago. We have never, I don't think that very, maybe people that you can count on one hand that lived the, the older influenza pandemic like a hundred years ago and are still living today. So this is something that is new for all of us that threw us totally off balance. The turbulent times that, that we are here now today are calling for self-confident, emotionally intelligent leader because emotional intelligence is basically the best trait or attribute that can, uh, that can make us navigate through the uncertainty and basically the loss that we might go through crisis. And in previous webinars, we have talked about the micro losses that we're going through that might not be like in the, uh, for other people, a huge thing, but we are all going through micro losses that could be even the lifestyle that we used to have before. Like, for example, me being a speaker and feeding on the energy that I get from my audience, I'm missing that. So it's a loss for me. So the losses that we're going through, we, if we are not emotionally intelligent where we can balance our feelings, we're going to be going through a really hard time. And people around us, including ourselves, what we're doing is that we are looking for psychological safety. Like, for example, I remember when COVID started and I was telling people like, oh my God, you know, I miss, like, I, I didn't know. It's like everything got closed and I didn't know. And it was, and I know it sounded like minimal uh, or marginal to people that hear like, what I'm going to do with my nails, you know, what I'm going to do with my hair. And, and it just like, people sometimes looked at me and, and, and shamed me basically. Like, it's like, how could you think about that when people are dying? You know, and, and I understand that I'm not minimizing the, the big effect of COVID had on, on certain families or on some families, but I need to remind everyone that we all have different emotional needs and we all go through grief in a different way and we all perceive our losses in different ways. And that's the beauty of emotional intelligence where it's not only about you, but it's also about other people and understanding where they're coming from because emotional intelligence is about emotion. So everybody is looking for a psychological safety right now. Emotional intelligence in very few words, it means that the ability that we can interact with other people, no matter what different background or what different experience or what perceptions they are in an effective way. Most of all, the most important character of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. Who we are from the inside out, and like we saw in the video, it's about accepting yourself, being self-aware of who you are, and like I call it, love our perfect imperfections, like warts and all. We need to accept ourselves and be aware of who we are inside out. Not only our identity that is on the outside, but who we are at the core. What is our why? What is our purpose? What is our passion? What is our mission in life? While we lead others with empathy and influence them. So emotional intelligence is basically a delivery system, like UPS. How you transmit, you know, how you deliver a package from UPS from one place to the other while the package is still intact and nothing happened to whatever is inside. That's the same thing with emotional intelligence is how you deliver or how, how you transmit what you know, your knowledge, your skills, your experience, so you can get people to feel safe psychologically. And when they feel safe, they feel they belong, they can cooperate and their production will be high as well as achieving results. The good news is while we are born with a fixed IQ, <clears throat> Emotional intelligence, and emotional intelligence, some people call it EI or EQ, like emotional quotient, is a learned skill. And you know when emotional intelligence really shows its colors, specifically for leadership, is when we are under pressure. So the pandemic and the unrest are the pressure that we have ever won back to back. So leaders that can actually lead others with self-confidence, with control, with like a kind of calmness, composure, are the people that people will gravitate towards. But if a leader or a person breaks down under stress or strain, that if they can't lead themselves, they can't lead anyone. 
But it's important also to say here that we are all human beings. And that's why I was sharing in the beginning of every crisis that we have, how our first reaction is like to panic. We all do that. But how fast we get out of the panic or how steady we get out of the panic, is that what will dictate if we are emotionally intelligent or not? So the lack of emotional intelligence basically is the, is the inability to know what people need from you or what are the needs of people, of those around you, either your family, uh, siblings, you know, your spouse, your significant other, your kids, you know, your sisters, your brothers, your neighbors, you know, your, your colleagues, your community, you know, your organization. It's, it's the ability to effectively knowing what they, what they actually need. And reacting from emotions without filtering them is like when someone, like I said, oh, you know what, he's, he's just like, he, he reacts very strongly. So I kind of, I mean, remember, if you ever were around a boss or even around a family member that will flame in a second, that you don't know when they will be okay listening to what you have to say, no matter how light or deep it is, you know, if you feel like this, they're gonna like get crazy like that in a minute, we will think a hundred times before sharing something with them. So you don't wanna be that person. So reacting from emotions without filter can actually cause mistrust and can jeopardize relationships. So in leadership, we call it that a dissonant leader. Negative, negative uh, emotions that, that leads to mistrust. But being self-aware and understand how your attitude, your behavior, your verbal and non-verbal communication can affect people around you. This is what we call resonant leadership. You know, I was on a, on a, on a webinar the other day and they were talking about unconscious bias. And you know, most of you know how, how emotional I am, I am about that. And one of the presenter was saying things that I'm like, are you serious? Like, and you're here trying to talk about unconscious bias. So one of the things he said, he said that we are born with behaviors and traits. We are never born with behaviors. We are born maybe with IQ and then the patterns of our parents are downloaded in our brain that later on kind of dictate the primary behaviors that we have in life. But we are not born with behaviors. We acquire behaviors as we go, but we also have the control in life through our emotional intelligence to control these behaviors, to make them work for us rather than work against us. So the center of creative leadership said that there are three most important things that can derail a person either in their personal life where they cannot have meaningful relationships or they cannot have good relationship with their family or uh, or their kids or their siblings, or professionally, if it can derail their career, basically. And there are three things. One of them, if someone has a low emotional intelligence, they cannot handle change. That's why whatever went on COVID that changed totally our way of life, basically threw them like away, like they couldn't know what to do and they're still trying to find their way. Two, inability to work well in team, like, most people personally, they went into like a lockdown with everybody around them, their children, their spouse. And for the first time, we are dealing with our spouses or significant others and our children 24 seven. And this is something that we have never did like that for, and for such a long time. So sometimes we might like, so these COVID crisis either made relationships stronger or weaker. So it's about the ability to work with people around us. And also it's about poor, if we don't have good emotional intelligence, we have poor interpersonal relations. Like